I hope you're buckled in because it's time for the next leg of our journey. Or should I say, we? Because going to the bird place. While your adventures up to this point have taken you all over the world, to reach Claw's home, you have to go to an entirely different plane of existence. Specifically, one of the four prime material planes, the plane of air. Most of the plane of air is just that, air. But in the treetops of Arakok, there are also trees. At least, people assume they are trees. Aracocra have lived and ruled in the tops of these trees since before recorded history, but if they are indeed trees, they are so enormous that nobody has ever seen the base of them. Their tops alone make up hundreds of miles of interlocking branches, which have been carefully woven, grown, and shaped through a combination of Aracocra's natural ability and magic to form the Nestlands of Aracoc a city-sized series of nests that house most of the Aracocras in existence. You're uh, laughing because he said cock, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like either it's Aracocra or it's, it's got to, they got to line up. It's or Aracoc. Arapenis. I, there are very few things that I'm absolutely inflexible on, but I've written so many fucking dick jokes into this arc. <laughs> If you take this from me, I'll ki- I'll kill you all in real life, not the game. In real, I'll come and I'll find you all and I'll kill you all. The good news is that the trip is relatively quick. Nitin, Claw's sister, is an accomplished planar traveler, and you are able to step from the main room of the squeaky wheel directly into the plane of air, and then fly from there to Arakok, as teleporting into the city is considered bad manners. Born toward the nest city on newly repaired wings, or by magic, Nitten fills you all in on all you need to know. By the way, Claw, I haven't said this, but you can fly now. Yay! Yeah. How'd that nice. happen? She gave you metal extensions for your wings at the end of the last episode. Sweet. Yeah. How does that feel, Dave, to know that <laughs> Claw can actually fly? I can also fly. I'm doing it right now. Mm. This is to me be flying. fair, Dave is actually probably flying via magic right now. Yep. So Face. Balls. Anyways, Mitten <laughs> says, Raw? The sunstone is, to put it mildly, father's dearest possession. Its power literally keeps our city standing. And if we don't find it before the festival of the sun, our whole civilization's in big trouble. Being related to what you would call birds, Aracocra don't really have a concept of stealing. And the shinier and more important the object, the fairer the game it is. Therefore, Father's always kept it on his person and safely guarded. But then, last week, on the night of the arrival of the emissaries from all over the material planes for the festival, he and his bodyguard were attacked in his chambers and it was stolen. If you want the sunstone, you're going to need to figure out who the culprit is and bring him to justice, right? Everyone who was staying at the house when it went missing has been locked inside since the attack happened. You'll meet them all today. <laughs> it's Clue. <laughs> oh, it's a murder mystery. Agatha Christie, here we come. All right. So not only is this a mystery, but I'm also going to reveal one other fun thing. All of the suspects in this arc were not created by me. They were suggested either in part or wholly by our Dungeon Master level patrons. Is there a Mrs. Peacock who's actually a peacock? Oh, <laughs> uh, there fucking is now. That's uh, yeah, that's there's got to be a Colonel Bustard. I'm excited yeah. for the bird puns. <laughs> uh, but I, I will cite who created these NPCs as we meet them. Uh, so a little fun fact. And hey, yeah, listener. That's right. If you were a Dungeon Master patron at the right time, you could have created your own character for this arc. All right. As you fly through the city of Arakok, you barely get to take in what a wonder it is. Everything is formed out of these branches and leaves. Restaurants serve giant bowls of dried seed. 
parks, sports arenas, libraries, and they are all built for travel through the air. I mean, don't get me wrong, there are a few people on the ground here and there, but they are mostly visitors from other planes and adorably fuzzy hatchlings. But mostly, the city is wide open with Aarakocra and the city itself on all levels and at all angles stretches out around you. Can I carry somebody if I fly? Yeah. Okay. All like a chicken in Zelda. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm the smallest, I'm just saying. Yeah. I like that you got the ability to fly and you were like, I want to be a chocobo. <laughs> <laughs> the opposite. Chocobos yeah, are chocobos land based. Run. Yeah. Yeah, yeah Eli. Man. I'm gonna Stupid. I'm gonna pick Sit Morgan down. up and throw him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna summon other of me's and we're gonna peck you I'm and pick take your heart away. <laughs> It would not be an arc of our podcast if we didn't descend to a <laughs> PvP combat. Stop. It, it wouldn't be an arc of our podcast if Morgan didn't pack me. Yeah, no, I'm with you. <laughs> Who wants to get some granola? Are they going to puke it into our mouths? <laughs> yeah. Oh, God. Oh, you just gotta, God. You got to ask. I ain't been here before. Still, yes. That's fair. <laughs> <laughs> I'm really hungry. You know, you're into some weird shit, Dave. Talk about some later cheese. Holy <laughs> shit. <laughs> you finally reach what is clearly the Royal Palace, a nest made of branches as thick as the tree trunks around you and bleached white with a powerful magic. It's also the only building in the city covered by a magical blue triangular wall of force. You guys have some experience with this spell. Nitin explains, Rock, put this up myself when the stone went missing. I tried to spell a finding, but the closest I can tell is that it's still in the building and nothing else. Don't worry, though. Nothing, and I mean nothing, can get through a wall of force. So if it's in here, we'll find it, Rock. And with a wave of her wing, a portal in the side of the triangle opens and you are led inside. I feel like I'm supposed to have this accent and I... I based it on the way you naturally talk. <laughs> <laughs> sort of the way that I did like a southern accent for all the gnomes and I did a did an Anna's parents like this thing. This is a subtle dig that I, yeah. I've been letting everyone down. <laughs> Continue. <laughs> Inside the palace, it is cool and shady, like the inside of the body of a hollow tree. A soft red moss has grown in a straight line down the hall like a luxurious red carpet, and there are beautiful and fragrant flowers growing everywhere as you make your way to the throne room. As the leafy curtains of the throne room are parted, you find it full of Aarakocra royal guards, servants, lesser nobles, and of course, the king himself. He is a regal, serious-looking eagle, Aarakocra, and his silver feathers cover the body of what was once obviously a great warrior, now gone slightly, if you'll pardon the pun, to seed. Because <laughs> he's a bird. Bird bald, seed. Bald eagle? No, he's, he's a bird. <laughs> You fucking suck. He's old. It could, maybe, I'm going to kill you. An omelet pun? Kill I don't your know. whole family. What? An seed. <laughs> Birds. <laughs> bird seed. Fuck. Yeah, no, I get it. Hey, I is what it's like? Is this what it's like? In a bird you kingdom is like murder. It's something dinner. Thanksgiving. I'm going to kill you. I'm gonna kill. <laughs> I want a divorce. I want a divorce. A and, hey, and I'm you taking your kids. Son. Oh, my God. By his side is a tremendous human bodyguard. As you walk in, the room falls into a admittedly awkward silence till the king finally says, Rah! So this is what it takes to get you to visit. Okay. Sure, go ahead. Yeah. Do you know what happened to me? Do they know what happened to me with the whole fucking captured and gladiator thing? They have. You don't know. They're all staring at you. All they have said is, so this is what it takes you to get you to visit. And I just went, ah, okay, yeah. I'm, that's all I'm going to do. I'm going to be silent after that. This is awkward. Should we leave while Claw talks to them? Yeah. Oh, oh I, I want you to stay because perhaps you can all shine a little light on where my son has been. I mean, where does everyone think half the Aracock Armory has been? We realized you'd been missing a few months ago, and there's a hefty reward out there for your return. I mean... We returned him. We just returned him. I just want to point that out. Yep. Can uh, we get the reward? A few months? I yep. mean, clock sucker. It didn't occur to you to reach out, <laughs> send a letter, open clock a portal? Sucker! <laughs> That's what just, Claw's short for. 
<laughs> just out of like out of story. <laughs> yeah. Is that a term of endearment or an insult? <laughs> no, it's it's your full name. Your full name. Yeah. As has just been revealed by your father in front of all of your party members is <laughs> clock sucker Aracock. Uh excuse nope. me, sir. I just want to be clear. You're saying uh, Claw's entire full <laughs> name is Clock Sucker. Of course. Clock sucker. I, of course he's a clock sucker. He's the crown prince. Got wait, it. wait. Spell it. Spell it. C L A H C K S U C K E R. That's clock sucker. <laughs> You're clock sucker. I am a clock sucker. My father sure. was a clock sucker. His father was a clock sucker. And someday, clock sucker, your son will be clock sucker Aracock. I want to retcon this immediately. <laughs> you can't. There's no shame in it. <laughs> of the many ways I am the god of the universe, you cannot undo it. My this. name is no, Clive. You know what? Clive no, instead. you know what? Claw, this actually kind of makes sense. You've definitely given off some clock sucker vibes. I'm definitely Clarence, not whatever he said. That's my real name. My name is Clarence. Why are you using that weird middle plane <laughs> accent? This is this is not a good look for you, Claw. Talk normal. I hate all this. Um, <laughs> I'm just gonna go easy on you in case I end up being Sned Drickhead at some point yeah. or something like that. So I've only been gone like two months. You said, yeah. Uh, I was in a theater troupe. He's the lying. End. That's not what we're. No, I, I was definitely a in a weird. theater troupe. For a theater troupe, yeah. Lie. Wait, yeah. wait, has Claude told us what happened to him? Oh, good point. That's a good question. It's all coming out. <laughs> Have you told them? I mean, I I am so. your bartender. Think about that. Like, no, honestly, I don't. we just don't care as a group of people. We don't care yeah. about each other. I don't think we'd have listened <laughs> even if he did, right? There have been like four different attempts on Dave's life and no one has ever mentioned it again. No. <laughs> I found that weird the whole time. No, I, it. No, I have not told I felt him, like but... somebody was going to ask me about that just now because now it's come up. It's fine. It's fine. No, it's my home, not your home. So I'm the important <laughs> one here, not you. This is about you, clock sucker. This is all about me. Yeah, no, I've been in the theater troupe. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, I mean, let us know when your play comes up, and your mother and I will. We're it's a musical. We'll, it's not a play. Plays are boring. Uh, well, then we're musical. not going to go. We're not going to go. <laughs> uh, I mean, don't get me wrong. I'll say I'm coming, but I'm. <laughs> well, that's where Daddy Clocksucker. <laughs> we're doing a Steve Spawn time. Son? <laughs> Son Son time. Time. Fucking great. We're doing fucking great. Oh. Rent. Rent with the W. R rent. Oh, very <laughs> nice. Very nice. Sure. Sure. Sorry. Swan time was the P. He should rent should have been first. It's, can't control the real world. No. All right. Either way, I'm I'm glad that you've been happy and healthy. Look, someone in this castle has the sunstone, my son. And if we don't get it back before the Festival of the Sun before noon, three days from today, our entire civilization will crumble into the clouds below. Our scholars are already noticing that the edges of the kingdom are becoming brittle. But don't worry, you will have some help. And then, behind you, in the throne room, you hear a voice say, Indeed you will. They're the best thing you can do. Is stay out of my way. Uh oh. And as you turn, you see a person as strange as you've ever encountered. His body is that of a tall, thin human with gray skin, but he has the head of an octopus. He doffs his deerstalker hat, turns up the collar of his peacoat, and says, Murloc Gnomes, <laughs> insulting detective. <laughs> <laughs> Just jumping in once again to thank you for listening to the show. Hey, if you're enjoying the show, why not head over to iTunes or Spotify or wherever you get your podcasts and leave us one of those five-star reviews I've heard so much about. Helps new people find out about the show, boosts us up in the rankings, and it just it's just a nice thing to do. It's a nice free way for you to acknowledge that you're enjoying the product. But hey, 
If you want a not free way to acknowledge that you're enjoying the product, why not head over to patreon.com forward slash DND minus and give us as little as a dollar an episode and become a patron over there. Hey, little early Christmas present. You probably heard about this already, but a little, well, late now because this is technically the January episode, but a little late Christmas present for you. We actually lowered the amount of patrons we need for two episodes a month. That's right. Two episodes a month. Bi-weekly podcast. I actually don't know if that's what bi-weekly means. So if that's not what it means, we're not doing that. But two, two episodes a month. If you want two episodes a month, we are now much closer because we lowered that number. So there's never been a better time to sign up. Plus all the benefits, the behind the scenes of the Dungeon Master Corners and the special games we play, all that. So you get all of that stuff when you sign up to support the show at various levels. All right. Next episode will be out the first Friday after the first Wednesday of February. So we'll see you then. When you say head of an octopus, yeah. do you mean just the you portion the of an octopus that would be the head? Or yes. he has eight tentacles sticking out. Eight tentacles above his, sticking out. So it's a person with an octopus as a head. Exactly. Uh, okay. Yeah. That's does a, he have uh, arms and Yeah. Tentacles? So does he like 10, yeah. 12 limbed? Wow. No. So he's, he's got a body of a human. Right? So Just two arms, a, two legs. It's like right. someone put an octopus over their head. Like a exactly. Yeah. Okay. So he's got exactly. like 12 right. limbs. Yeah. So for those of you who are unfamiliar, Murloc Gnomes is an illithid or mind flayer. A race of nefarious, brilliant, and entirely evil beings who originate from the Underdark. So the idea that one is here to help you is a little bit like the king just introduced you to your new bodyguard, a poisonous snake that is also a racist. Okay, Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> I right, thought so, we, yeah, if you've seen Stranger Things season yeah, two, I do. I thought oh, right. we met a mind flare. What was the th what was the Donald no, Trump? No, voice we met. Thing? We met. Those are those are different. Those aren't a mind beholder. Flares. That was That's a beholder. A beholder. Oh, okay, okay, never mind. Uh, and a bunch of people gave me shit, and they were like, eh, "It wasn't powerful enough." He was a beholder zombie. I actually made that super clear. So, <laughs> Good read a dungeon master. <laughs> Thanks, Amber. Notes at home by themselves. Can I steal the hat off his head? Because you said when we came in here that stealing it was like different here, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. No, the way so yeah, I'm right. gonna take that hat. He's he's across the room, so I feel like if you're Let's gonna lunge, you're gonna lunge at him. I'm gonna dash. I got some dash stuff going on. Hang on, let me check. Oh okay. God, or don't use your key points. Now. Step okay. of the wind. Here we go. Step of the wind. <laughs> Before nope. you can do that, Nitten steps in between you and says, "Now, now," because I think she assumes you're gonna attack him because he's a <laughs> mind flayer, and says. Before you say anything, Murloc here isn't like other mind flayers, are you, Murloc? And he says, Indeed, I am not. Though I admit I originally came to this plane with plans for domination, it was the most fortunate of accidents that changed me into the man I am today. Wrong. He fell and hit on his head. Several hundred times, in fact. When I awoke, I knew that whoever I had been, I had but two callings, to solve mysteries that no one but me can solve, and to love this woman. And with that, he and Nitten embrace and start Ooh. making out, like right in well, front I'm of still him. Oh, while he's wait, wait, wait. Wow. wait, how is the, what, how are the tentacles involved in this? Uh, I, oh, I, they're so. like, <laughs> picture extra lips. That's how they're working. If they have a kid, would it be an Aracroctopus? <laughs> <laughs> I'm stealing the hat while they're making out. <laughs> All right. Slide of hand check. <laughs> Roll a sleight of hand check for me. They are distracted. So I'm going to call this a 13. 19. Oh, All right. shit. Wow. Hat is yours. That was very important to use your 19 for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so important. Can you describe the hat so I can put it into my notes? It's a deer stalker cap. It's a Sherlock Holmes hat. Nothing special because he has eight tentacled face or whatever. No, man. It's just a so the top hat. is just a hat. It's just a, it is oh, a hat right. to His Murloc, signify. Murloc Schmolms. Uh, do you have any cocaine? <laughs> then <laughs> that, would, that would be the more fun thing to get to. I'm sorry. That's what you actually should be stealing from him. In the Good to know that you like to party. <laughs> now, <laughs> let's have a look at you. So he breaks his embrace with Nitten and, and looks you all up and down. He Does says, he use hmm. a magnifying glass? 
<laughs> he should use a magnifying yes, glass. Yes, he does. He uses a magnifying Thank glass. God. Yeah. Is his arm mm. holding it or is one of the tentacles? No, holding it? one of the tentacles. No, the, the tentacles, tentacles are tentacles. just part of his face. <laughs> what? He the okay. I feel like I'm not being clear here because I really I want to get this. <laughs> he's all not in actually your head. an octopus. He's a mind flayer. Is what you're he's saying? He's a he's got an octopus for like. a head. An entire octopus an is entire his head. An octopus is his head. Everything below that is a use, human body. He exactly. wouldn't use the arms? Okay. No, those, they're just like hanging off his body. Okay. Off All his right. face. Like they're a beard. useless. Yeah. Yeah. Like the dude exactly. in um, Pirates of the Caribbean. It, exactly. He's actually based on a mind flare. Okay. okay. Yeah. Right. So perfect, perfect image. Now, let's have a look at you, he says. The gnome is the obvious muscle. An undefeatable <laughs> bruiser with a can-do attitude, yet the smell of Snogsbane tells me that he spent some time in the police force. A hard-line conservative with a no-nonsense attitude. The Dragonborn, of course, is your powerful and wise spellcaster. Loyal, friendly, and knowledgeable about most deep magics. He's the one you all turn to when you need guidance. This guy's good. Of course. This guy's really good. He is pretty good. <laughs> the dwarf is your lovable butler and maid. I imagine she's a feisty one under all her yes sirs and no sirs. And of course, clocksucker, a prince, a natural leader. But clocksucker, listen to me. You let yourself be pushed around too easily. These trinkets you carry, they suggest a sentimentality that doesn't always serve you. You must learn to stand up for yourself and occasionally follow your own plan. When you do, <laughs> you'll be surprised at what you find. Well, you're so it right. It appears that you just know everything. My goodness. Yeah. No need to thank me. It's a gift bestowed by several hundred blows to the head, and I point it in the direction it's needed. Excellent. Now, let us meet the first of our suspects. And with that, he takes off down the hall at a brisk pace. We don't have to follow him, do we? I, I feel like we have to follow him. I think we should follow him. Uh, oh, excuse me. Sirs, we should probably follow him. <laughs> we should definitely follow him, don't you think? But, oh, gee -hee, I wouldn't know because I'm just a silly little maid. In my very wise opinion, I actually agree with you. <laughs> All right. Well, if he tries anything, I'll whip his ass. Yeah. <laughs> with my muscle. Clock Tucker, <laughs> what do you think? I'm going to yeah. obediently follow. I'm obediently following. As you catch up to him, he begins to narrate to you. Our first suspect is the most obvious one, Reese Waffles from the Tabaxi Prandium. Uh, Reese Waffles was created by patron, Dungeon Master patron, Teresa Gomez, uh, who is also in charge of our wiki. And does a he goes. Uh, Teresa is generally an awesome person. Anyways. Reese Waffles from the Tabaxi Prandium. Uh, tabaxis, by the way, are cat people. For obvious reasons, the Tabaxi and the Aracocra have been feuding for years, <laughs> and Reese is the Prandium family's chief legal mind. She's here drawing up treaties that are as tight as a dish. <laughs> <laughs> of course, if it turns out that she's a spy sent to bring down Aracocra society as we know it, that's quite the bee in the bonnet. Your first job is to find out what she knows, but for the love of God, be subtle. If she's not our culprit, you could start a war. And then he stops in front of a door that has a lovely golden sign painted on it that says, Reese Waffles, Tabaxi Prandium. Right. So what does the next door say? Well, why don't you start with this one and then we'll <laughs> move on to the next one. <laughs> Clock sucker, go to get in there. Does he have a pipe? Does he have a like a like a Sherlock Holmes He does Holmes have pipe? a pipe. Yeah, he has a pipe. Okay, I'm gonna steal the pipe. Okay, you're gonna do this with disadvantage because he's got tentacles that help him. Cool. Hold <laughs> oh, on. Oh, they it. help now. Wait, 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 wait. Hold on a second. <laughs> Thirteen. No way. <laughs> Don't believe you. But that's fine. No, we'll move the on. The tentacle moves it out of your way. Clock <laughs> 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 All right, clock sucker. Let's do this. I will get that pipe. All right. I feel like if the object here is to be subtle, I feel like Claw and Dave should maybe go to the next room. Considering <laughs> how good he was at determining what we our personalities were. All right. No, that's fair. That's fair. Maybe we should do exactly the I'm opposite gonna walk of whatever into the he room. says. <laughs> he doesn't seem to be aware of us saying this right now either. He's very <laughs> slow. He has actually wandered off down the hall. <laughs> That's why he's not aware of it. I follow him. Now that I think I'm about gonna it. I'm going to go into the room. 
I follow the right. Murloc Holmes. Tight. Cool. All right. Great. Well, the party's splitting up. Always a great, great. sign. <laughs> Everyone except Claw, I guess, goes in. <laughs> don't be afraid to follow your own plan. <laughs> While you don't know how long Miss Waffles has been in residency at the palace, it is clear from her rooms that she has made herself comfortable. The branches and leaves that make up the furniture have been covered with plush cushions, and some of the sturdier trunks bear the marks of long scratching sessions. The room is dominated not by one desk, but by two. One bears sheaths and scrolls of obvious legal documentation, but the other is covered in automatons. The parts of several small robotic vehicles litter the place, and sensors, monitors, and the like are strewn about in various forms of assemblage. Reese herself is 5'9", with violet fur and green eyes. She wears dark green loose-fitting knee-length shorts held up with a belt and suspenders. She also wears a black sleeveless bodysuit with a turtleneck and a backpack of holding, which, even though she's in her room, she hasn't taken off. She stares at you eerily as you enter, still in the midst of her work, and says, Yes? Can I help you? My God, I love the color of your fur. Yeah, that's what I was it's thinking, beautiful. too. It's beautiful. Why, what lovely compliments from strangers in my room. To what do I owe the pleasure? Uh, okay, well, um... The, the clock suckers, I guess, have uh, asked us to come and help find the missing, uh, the sunstone. missing object. Sunstone. There, there we go. I oh, and do they believe that I have stolen it? No. <laughs> no. No. But they, no. they, but they, I think you can probably guess we're supposed to talk to everybody. No, let's find out what they know. <sighs> I honestly wish I could help you. I am not unaware that amongst a race with no sense of ownership and a penchant for stealing, the blame for this missing item probably falls to me. Honestly, I think it was one of the guards, and now they're just too ashamed to admit it. I bet if you were to cast a zone of truth over the lot of them and have the stone found, You'd have the stone found in an afternoon, but as a diplomat of sorts, I must be careful about what accusations I make. So Hi. tell me about this zone of truth. Is that something you could do right now? <laughs> no, I do not practice that form of magic. Oh, wow. but, but I do. Well, why don't you oh. practice it right now and just show me how it works? I... I, I... I have a question, though. Did, have you ever seen the stone, personally? Of course. It's just over the size of a marble. Yellow. Shines bright with the sun's holy light. It's mm. quite an impressive bauble. And where did you see it? Why, on the king's person, of course, when I first arrived. Mm. Hey, that... uh, just unrelated, Um, that's a cool bag that you have that you... I have it not taken off. Can I just see it real quick? You wish to search my no, no, no. I just it's cool. I, I like it. I, I, I just really wanted to wouldn't suggest giving check it anything out. to either of these two over here. No, no, I'm not there. Oh, I'm right. Right. that's right. <laughs> I forgot. So I'm the other one of the two. Oh, never <laughs> yeah, she, they, that's right. She's given you valuable information. She must be on your side. <laughs> and I'm gonna wink, but only to where? Um, only to where? Bridget can see. <laughs> I mean, I can just, I'm just standing here looking I, at you. <laughs> I don't really know how you were planning standing to win. in front of a cat. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I am just a dwarf standing in front of a cat asking her, a uh, tabaxi, excuse me. Um, uh, when, when did it go missing? I suppose it was a few days after my arrival. Oh, right. There was such a kerfuffle in the morning. I went to go for my morning stroll and found myself walled inside this place, surrounded by, well, birds. Uh-huh. And was there any... It was the morning, you say, that, that it went missing? Well, obviously it's all been very hush-hush and... Nobody's willing to tell me much, but rumor is that the king and his 
bodyguard, as it were, were found unconscious with the stone missing. Nobody knows who knocked them out. Nobody knows what happened. Have you seen either of them since this happened, the king or his bodyguard? Of course, I see them constantly. And that bodyguard of his follows him wherever he goes. I've heard he's one of the last paladins of the crown. la dee da I guess I could ask this without asking it in character. Did we notice any kind of injuries on the heads of either the king or his uh, bodyguard when we came in? Ooh, you know what? Um, I'm going to say no. No, you did not. Wow, not even rolling for it. Mm-mm. Okay. Well, we didn't notice it is the phrasing mm-hmm. that Eli answered. You yeah. didn't notice it. Okay, and and he if, had to think about it. Uh, how long? How long has it actually been since the the stone went missing? Oh, I suppose it's been four or five days now. Okay, so you've been here for about a week. Yes. Okay. Uh, what are these trinkets you got here? Ah, this it's a hobby of mine. While the Aracocra seem uninterested in what lies below their civilization. I am not. I believe there may be a lush forest home far beneath us, which my clan could settle in permanently. But since no explorer has ever returned from below, my hope is to send one of these mm, vehicles to explore and see what we can find. I call them reconnaissance observation vehicles for effective relocation or rovers. Mm. Hey. Okay. It's more like row fur, though, right? Row fur. Yeah, you. you uh, you're ro- almost or, there. Or roper. Oh, that's good. I wish I thought of that. <laughs> <laughs> that's so much better. I've got a good bit coming up with this, but that's that's pretty good. <laughs> Balls. <laughs> okay. I'm gonna steal that. I call him a rope. <laughs> <laughs> Should have stolen it. Damn it. Fucking flu. Any other questions? Claw, are you yep. actually doing something else? I we have can, a whole can... plan in mind, but what's 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 going on in my neck of the woods? You're standing outside the room, I guess. No, I'm standing. No, he, he went followed... down the hall. I followed him. Yeah, he followed, followed Murloc. Oh, so no, what's he doing? He's... What's going on he, down there? He's waiting outside another room. Okay, uh, I'm going to like he's... try and tickle his tentacles and try and get into a slap fight with him. Tickle his tentacles. So helpful. So Get helpful. A slam. What are you doing? Leave me alone. You keep crazy. Going. Keep going. Clock sucker. Keep ow. going. Well, ow. What are you? Ow. Stop it. <laughs> keep Prince Clock sucker. He's not Why? responding at all. Well, while this is going, I'm going to try and steal the pipe. Uh, uh, okay. Here, I'll make another <laughs> uh, sleight of hand check with uh, disadvantage because he's got tentacles. I really need the pipe for my plan, just so you okay. know. Okay. Ah, come That's on. That's a nine. <laughs> <laughs> I want to see if you did worse. I said disadvantage. Oh, okay. Okay. Nine. Twelve. Nope, it's a nine. It's a nine. Once again, he snatches the pipe. Prince Clocksucker, what are you doing? Why? That's okay. I'm going to go ahead without the pipe for my plan. I'm going to put on the <laughs> blue dwarven robes. I'm going to put on the deer stalker hat. Okay, he's just watching you. That's fine. <laughs> I'm going to okay. pick up the worthless gem that I got and pretend that it's the sunstone, and I'm going to walk into another one of the rooms. Okay, it's locked. Just like a random room. You walk into a broom closet. You're in a broom closet. I'm going to try and get the tentacle guy to unlock one of the other rooms. Hey, man, you should unlock this this room right here. What's this one? Why am I unlocking a different room? <laughs> Don't you want to talk to the tabaxi? No, I want to talk to the next one without all the other people there. You want to talk by yourself to yep. the next one? Yep. Just... Just hear me out here. <laughs> Let's say you were trying to tell a cohesive story. <laughs> and right about then, we're going to come out of the room. Yeah. Wonderful. Okay. <laughs> nope. I'm going to try. I'm in whatever room they go into. I'm going to try and get into another one. Okay. Um, I'm glad you're all out here. He attacked me. Tried to take my pipe again. <laughs> I, really sorry about him. I hate to He's in the this. broom would, closet now. <laughs> would you, he's in the broom closet. That came out. cocksucker. He, he seems to want to corner people. Uh, can you drag him into whatever room I bring you to next? Got it. Just, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to... Wait, wait. I'm going to huddle with my team. Okay, here's the deal. I'm going to go in and play bad cop 
after you guys have interviewed somebody. Okay, so well, whichever you just one you just, her. yeah, I'll go into her room and play I bad cop. I don't know what Perfect. you hope to get from this. I, oh, I the old like that game of good cock, bad, bad cock. Maybe you bad cop somebody who's not, you know, liable to start a war over it. I, I, <laughs> I mean, that would be less fun, but sure. Okay. Let's go. I mean, it's your people person. that'll be going to war. I mean, you know, I, I have a feeling the gnomes will be all right. <laughs> also, do you think, do you think it's, uh, you're in a disguise right now? Yes. You're just wearing a hat and a new <laughs> set of clothes. Yes. She's never seen you before. I'm telling you, I needed the pipe. I needed the pipe for it to work, the, but it's are, okay. I'm sure there's a tapestry of you somewhere in this building. She's going to know what your face is. Oh, so you're a bird that's different looking. <laughs> you're a bird. Toss in my two tentacles. You are the crown prince of this kingdom. So eh, pretty much everyone's going to know what you look like. That's Just, why I got the robes and the hat. <laughs> I, I cannot emphasize enough. I mean, imagine, you know how Barack Obama is real in our universe. Imagine yep. if Barack Obama put on robes and a hat and then walked into your house and pretended he wasn't Barack Obama. And you, Obama. Know, you know how you wouldn't be like, is that a bird or... <laughs> or Barack Obama? Or Barack Obama. <laughs> it's happening. Uh, okay. Well, so you guys are uh, going to go into the next room, right? No, yeah. you're going to come with us. I'm no, gonna, I'm going I'm, into the I'm, first one. Strength check. Okay. You're going to have to strength check me for this one. I'm going to bring you with us. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, it doesn't well, look great. Somebody got to help me with this. <laughs> she's got a seven. Fifteen. Claw, you, you break free, and I'm going to say you make it all the way into the tabaxi's room. Okay. I'm going to burst in behind him. I am so sorry. Oh, yeah, hello. I, I, scruff of the neck, I'm pulling him out. <laughs> You're back. No, you lost the thing. I'm doing Dave it again. I'm rolling again. Oh, 24 God. strength Someone check. Someone help me. Someone help me. <laughs> I did really badly with strength just now. Uh... <laughs> I'm going to light a so... bowl of snogs, man, and just hang out with Murloc for a bit. Did I just, he's, like, he's break my arm? He's got a pipe going already, so... <laughs> If I could paint a word picture, <laughs> Claude comes bursting in. The tabaxi starts to greet him. Bridget comes in, <laughs> dives next to him, misses. Dave slams into the wall next to the door. <laughs> Trips over Bridget. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, you're all back. With... <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm going to call out uh, not all of us no. from, the, from the hallway. <laughs> oh, okay. Bridget, that get one. up. I don't know who these guys are, but I wanted to question you myself. The name is Chuck Slarky, oh and we God. need to get down Sucker, to business. Get out of there. By the way, Chuck Slarky is an anagram of my name that you gave me, so we're going to That's pretty that. fantastic. <laughs> I love an anagram. <laughs> You're very clearly the, the crown prince. Nope. Chuck Slarky. Back you are... Okay, Chuck Slarky, how can I help you? I have the sunstone here. No, nope. yep. that's not it's, what it is. No, <laughs> see, I am the crown prince Chuck Slarky, so I would know what the sunstone is. I want you to know I really <laughs> deeply regret taking this diplomatic mission. <laughs> so much. I've been trapped in here for a week. I got a box of my own shit in the corner. <laughs> and now... Now this fucking clown shoes... I'm going to grab the box of shit and we're going to take it into the next room. You're taking her litter box. <laughs> yep. <laughs> oh, my okay. God. And we're going to go into the next room. Make a dexterity check. <laughs> <laughs> I really hope you undextrously take the litter box right now. 18. That's Damn an it. 18. Yep. You snatch her litter box and run out of the room. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus Christ. This has been the worst. <laughs> and then she closes the door. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Who's the Murloc next one? Yep, Murloc Holmes is just sort of staring at you. I... And sort of like... <sighs> so if you like, check. First one, check. So I want to be, be clear here, too, because she's like us sized, right? Yeah. So the, yes. the litter box is going to be the size of a like a laundry basket, at least. <laughs> you know, absolutely, yeah. And it's filled with like real big stinking turds. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get somebody to talk. <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> I right. I would like to leave the mission. I quit the mission. <laughs> I I I quit also. I, I'm gonna go back to being a big evil creature or whatever the fuck it used no. to be. Oh, can I be an evil creature with you? 
I people assured me that if I was like an evil creature, heroes would eventually slay me. Got to be better than this. <laughs> Got to be whatever sword was going to go through my eyeball and send me into the pitch black of the underdark. I welcome it. All right. On to the next room. Yeah. No. Next up is Driggs Bane. So this is created by Briggsy Boy, who the character Briggsy was named after. Um, Driggs Bane is a wandering lycanthrope wizard in search of a cure. He's been in Aracock a few years now, working with local scholars and spellmongers, but to no avail. Word is he was consulting the Flying Library when the Sunstone went missing. Perhaps an unlucky coincidence, or perhaps he got desperate and thought a powerful magical object was the key to his salvation. All right, so I know magic pretty good. Is he right? Could the Sunstone do something like that? I know Arcana um, and shit. You know what? You're not super familiar with the, the Sunstone because it's like one of these very powerful objects of this giant mystical object. But you know that like with powerful enough magic, you can do a lot of really cool shit. So maybe? I know this is going to sound crazy, but let me take the lead on this one. Fuck no. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Just to be I clear, you're holding a large else. box of uh, shit. Right I now. absolutely yeah. am willing to let him take the lead. I'm yep. dying I, to know. I don't know about that. I might cast are we, command are on we him gonna right waterboard now. him with the kitty leader? <laughs> <laughs> I burst through the room before anybody else can. I can cast command on um uh I have on... one that'll make him float up to the ceiling. <laughs> 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 yeah, so uh wisdom saving throw, Morgan. Uh, six. Yeah, you did not beat a 14. Um, so I'm going to say, sorry, one second. I, I need to figure out. Yeah, read that spell yeah. description All for right. us. You speak I think a you just command word, me, one right? One word yeah. command. <laughs> one word command to a creature you can see in his brain. <laughs> I'm D-O-N-T. going to say silence. Well, that's oh, okay. I, I don't feel like it's my thing to work. God, what a terrible use. Yeah, of your I, I don't need. I don't need to talk for my plan to work. That's fine. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Make him drop the box of shit. No, no he didn't even explain. You know what? One oh, word. You know what? Actually, you know what? Hey, can I say stop? No, you already said silence. No, you yeah, said, you silence. said silence. All right, I'm like. casting it again. No, nope, because if Dave can't only can't come out of being a falcon, you can't stop from saying silence. No, so, that's not how that's I not, I'm casting in, I again. walk in with the box of shit and the worthless jam. I put both on the excuse table. Excuse me, put do your do your wisdom saving throw. I, no, 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 you can't. No, no you, you can't. Hey. Just keep rolling no. until you get him. I no, yeah. I am. I am. Oh no, yeah, I guess you did get him. Slots. So yeah, I've already gone in though. It's too late. So I put the box of shit and the worthless gem on the table in front of him. I can't say anything, right? I'm not saying anything. Can I describe the room? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, so the first thing that strikes you about Driggs's chamber is the curtains. Since the palace is made of interwoven branches, it's normally illuminated by the light that slips between the gaps, but every inch of this room is covered in thick curtain and carpet. To keep the room from being pitch black, the place is lit with lanterns and a cheery fire, but it does leave the room with a rather gloomy feel. Driggs, as you burst in, is a young human with messy red hair and loose-fitting robes, and he greets you with enthusiasm. Oh, uh, wow, Pr- Prince Clocksucker, I-, I can't tell you how much I've heard about you. You, Oh, that's a box of shit and a rock. Okay. <laughs> Hi. Oh, and you brought friends. Hello, I everyone. I am so Hello. sorry about him. I'm going to um, kind of point menacingly between the gem and the box of shit and be like, one of these... Can I, you. can I? I'd like to cast command. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, Claw. Sure. Sucker. Wisdom saving throw, Claw. Ah, nine. That's a nine. Nice. Not good enough. What's your one word? Uh, I will Please. I will say grovel, which means you fall <laughs> prone and end your turn. <laughs> All right. So stand, the crown groveling. prince comes into the room of this, <laughs> this The novelization is not really going to capture yeah. this moment. I've you could have yeah. said... <laughs> he points said to a rock. He points to a laundry <laughs> basket full of cat shit. And then he falls to the ground. <laughs> into the shit. And begins to grovel. Oh, okay. He seems like he's going through a lot right now. He really uh, misses the sunstone. It's really been sure. hard on him and his family. Uh, I fucking bet. So, uh... <laughs> Can I help you guys at all? Um, this is the worst. Yeah, <laughs> if I can it just is. Tell you guys. I'm gonna take the shit out of the room. Can I take the shit out of the room? 
You can take okay, the shit out I'm of them. How long? Bit. How long does command last? For a while. Someone's got to read <laughs> the spell. Round. Someone it says take a one look. round. One round. So ten seconds. <laughs> Damn it. I think and it's like ten or six seconds. Yeah, I think I think you're right. I'm gonna tie him up. Can I tie him up? <laughs> <laughs> no, you're carrying the shit out of the room. You're carrying uh, a laundry basket of shit. Somebody out of the room. tie him up. Okay, so you you tie up Prince Claw. <laughs> <laughs> wait, you wait, can, wait, I no, as I'm commanded, or has ten seconds passed? I assume they get it done in ten yeah, seconds. Yeah, no, okay. I, I have some rope. I have rope. Okay. okay, so you hog tie Prince Claw. <laughs> Claw, you can talk now because I'm pretty sure that command spell has ended. <laughs> oh, wow. You're tying up the prince in my room. Okay. <laughs> I just do what hey. I'm told to do sometimes, man. You know how it is. Um, when we I'm hung okay, out with no, Kat, it went way worse troop. than this, this is by normal. the way. <laughs> I, uh, this is I would offer to leave, but I literally can't. So, can I help you? <laughs> if you what had to anything? guess what play we were putting on, what would you guess? Oh... <laughs> uh, Fifty Shades of Grey. <laughs> <laughs> the musical. The musical. <laughs> um, okay. Hi. First impressions are Hi. wild. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you're never going to believe this. <laughs> we, Funny story. It, honestly, honestly, <laughs> I might. <laughs> <laughs> we are, um, we're actually supposed... We're here to figure out what happened to the Sunstone. And as you can tell, it's been very hard on one clock sucker over here. Hey, I don't want to tell you guys how to do your job. I do not think this is the way to do it. Neither <laughs> do I. <laughs> you, don't even do know I. What, you don't even have to know what our job is, really, to, yeah. not, to know this ain't the way to do it. Honestly, if your job was to freak the fucking shit out of me... <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's that part of it, honestly. <laughs> yeah, be, be, be I would say that's a okay. plus. So, yeah, right. consider me So tell us what you know. About the sunstone. About the sunstone. Oh, when was the last sure. time you saw it? And don't forget, if you lie, there's going to be more cat shit. Uh, sure. Disregard him. Driggs. I don't think it's clear that he'd be able to find more cat shit at this point. <laughs> I, I, would I mean, it's love, just outside It'll be the, the same hear, cat shit. Yeah. <laughs> I would love to hear what this fine person in front of us wants to sell us. I was just saying my fucking name. Don't don't <laughs> don't get too into it. Anyways, yeah, um so let's see what do I know about the stone? Uh the king uh, apparently carries it on him all the time. Uh rumor in the castle is that it was stolen uh, a couple of nights ago. Uh, I was here doing research on my um condition, uh but when the thing went missing they told me I couldn't leave. So they set me up with these, uh, you know, sun and moonlight proof digs. And uh, I even got special warded doors in case I go Lyco. And he points behind you and you can see there are like magical runes behind you. Uh, and the kitchen sends me plenty to eat. Uh, the librarian has lots of books I can read. I mean, look at this. And he pulls out from under the desk. He says, look, someone sent me a bag of mini muffins. That's really Hi. nice. That is very nice. You have to do that. You mind if I ask, is it rude to ask what you Lyco into? Oh, no, uh, that's uh, totally, totally normal. So you guys know werewolves. It's a, it's a blood curse passed through a bite or a scratch. Uh, if two werewolves meet and mate in their wolf form, they have what's called an alpha, which is like a werewolf, you know, claws, teeth, uh, can't be hurt by anything except magic and silver. But alphas, uh, we're a lot bigger. We're a lot meaner uh, than normal werewolves, which are already pretty big and mean. Mm -hmm. So, so, yeah. so when's the last time you went all uh, wolf on on everybody? Oh, um, I mean, it's been a couple of years now. I'm pretty good at controlling it. I, I can usually bury myself pretty deep underground, which keeps me from changing or changing too much. So, yeah, it's it's been an okay couple of years. So you you haven't been a a wolf since you've been here, then? Uh, no, no, not not for a couple of years, no. You mentioned the sun as well as the moon. Yeah. So um, the problem is that the curse of lycanthropy, uh, a lot of people think it's about uh, exposure to moonlight. But the, the weird thing about moonlight, uh, not a lot of people know this, it's actually just sunlight reflected off the moon. Uh, you know, the like the like rocks. You don't think a lot of up. people know that? I think everybody knows that all the light is from the uh, sun. 
Okay. Well, uh, you no, know, you know what? I'll tell you. I, I you go to a Trump companions. rally and talk to them and ask them. <laughs> to fucking moonlight. I think my like companions forget that we're in a fucking you. fantasy land. Also, there's a fire comes out of a fucking moon. All right. Jordan <laughs> Clever <laughs> makes his whole career on people not I knowing mean, that. I mean, statistically speaking, fifteen percent of them don't believe in the moon. So yeah. Ex- thank you. They, okay. So about a month my, ago, we saw acidic oils. So you know what? I'm willing to provide to believe anything at this point. Yeah. So you know when I'm. When I'm in a foreign plane like this one, you can never be too careful. So I try to avoid all kinds of light. All right. Have you That's seen, good. speaking of sun, did you see the sunstone when you were here, when you first got here? Yeah, yeah. I sh- he's eating a muffin now as he's talking to you. Are we in yeah. the dark right now? So it's lit by lanterns, um, and there's a fire crackling in the space, but you are in relative dark. Oh, right. Yeah. Um. Yeah, no, I saw it when I first arrived. I, I, you know, greeted the king and asked permission to use the flying library. Who sent and, you those muffins? Oh, someone from the royal family, I guess. Um, they were just here this morning when I, ow! And his hands fly to his mouth as a white stone about the size of a marble rolls out of his mouth. He stares at the stone in surprise and then horror as the warded branches behind you grow and weave closed behind you. Driggs's red hair already begins to spread down his face and over his body, and his arms grow into hideous size as his mouth grows, revealing a jaw filled with dripping razor-sharp teeth until you are cornered in this tiny, dark chamber with a full-sized alpha werewolf. Everybody, roll initiative for me. While your adventures up to this point have taken you all mm, too casual. While your adventures Relax. up to this point have taken you. That's, no, that's exactly the same. There is no difference between those two. No, there was, a, uh, there was an emotional fortitude behind it. You got to get. <laughs> I don't believe. You got to get ready. You, you'll hear it. I'm keeping all this in the episode and you'll hear. That there's just there's a man speaking that second line. And a boy CP. <laughs> Clock sucker, you let yourself be. <laughs> God, I practice saying clock sucker so many fucking times. <laughs> like to Max. <laughs> Max, listen. <laughs> Why is it that every time we do d d minus some weird shit happens with my computer and makes it seem like I don't know how to computer. Genuinely, <laughs> if I were a secret genius, this is what I would do to you. I know. I know. Because it's right? just this record. I, you know, I mean, we do a game record every week, a scathing record every week, a bit the record with Tom and C. Slavery. I, I never have the, uh, whatever it is about this. And it's, it's also always your computer. Yeah. Yeah, right, right. Like that one was clearly a problem with the link. Mm-hmm. So, Eli, you're saying that you, as a criminal mastermind, would make it specifically <laughs> so that me and Morgan would think Noah was bad at computers. <laughs> yeah, it's the <laughs> ultimate punishment for no illusions. Is technology that doesn't work that everyone assumes is his fault, but is actually the technology's fault. No, not everyone. Not everyone. Just me and Morgan. Right, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And Morgan hears the other audience. Well, yeah, so but just that's me. the thing. It's really, it's just you. <laughs> <laughs> it's the perfect crime. Uh. <laughs> The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2021. All rights reserved.